bracing brace brace for an unexpected and thrilling race now what we do have is an impressive international entry list among them we have this weekend form, uh, former formula one driver adrian sutil who might be very happy because not only he won yesterday his first race in this championship but today he's a starting from pole adrian how are you feeling ahead of the race well all from prom getting prom, ready so um, <laughs> yeah i'm uh, always happy to drive a little bit so i do my best and uh, have fun I have to correct myself. You said you were starting from pole. No, you're starting from from, from row, exactly. you, but you have your own boutique on pole. Correct, yes. uh, after the speed and the experience that you have and the speed you showed yesterday, do you think you can catch up with him soon? I try my best as always, you know, we're here for a little challenge and competition. So, yeah, I will do my best and see what the outcome is. Thank you very yeah. much. Good luck. And delighted to welcome Adrian Sutil uh, to the grid of the Ferrari Challenge. And yesterday, then, he had a fantastic uh, race and he took the win. Of course, he was gifted the opportunity. And he was, in fairness to him, he um, said that actually up on the podium because uh, Dorian Pin gifted him the opportunity of the race win. Of course, he seized it and he won very well and in very commanding style. So, well done, Adrian Sutil, then. He's qualified well. He is on the front row of the grid. Alongside him, though, is John Vortique. Let's go back to Marietta Evans right now. Today we were treated to an amazing battle between John Bartik and Adrian Sutil. And today it is, at least for the start of the race, John Wartik who has the advantage, Paul. Uh, John, starting from Paul, how much that, that is going to help you to try to like defend yourself and go away from Adrian Sutil? Yeah, of course. Um, as you have seen yesterday, the battle was quite close. Um, I will do the maximum to keep uh, the lead during the whole the race. And uh, yeah, that's the, the main goal. It's going to be a really, really important run to turn one here. Yeah, of course. As I told you, my my main goal is the, the championship. Uh, so I need to finish every race, take the maximum of the points. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see. The race is a race, so we never know. Thank you very much. Good luck. John Vortig then, uh, certainly he had a torrid time of it in Portimao, but he and the car are as one this weekend, and uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, what John Vortig is able to do today. And, uh, of course, he has put himself in the best possible position by uh, starting from uh, P1. Good qualifying from John Vortig. A good qualifying too from uh, Adrian Sutil. And then the uh, Dorian Pin uh, has got a lot of work to do. Um, however... I feel sure that uh, overtaking will be the name of the game. Uh, Luca Nermi and Anjibadi that you can see there uh, as we follow Marco Gasper down the grid. Uh, to the right-hand side of your picture is Christian Bunsbrook. To the left-hand side of your picture is Arno Dalmeyer as we continue our walk down the grid then. To the right-hand side, you can see the number eight car of uh, Nicolo Rossi. And then it is the number 89 car of Nigel Schoendevert, who's uh, welcome into the Ferrari Challenge. What a battle this man had last time out yesterday. Uh, to the left-hand side, that was Hanno Laskowski, who spent the entire time uh, bouncing around with this guy, car number 25, Alessandro Cozzi. What a battle that was between the two of them. And uh, Nico Spalek, if we have anything like we had yesterday, it was really, really dramatic, wasn't it? Good yeah. afternoon to you, I should say. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Yes, it was dramatic, especially towards the end when the Dorian Pin car dropped away from the lead of the race, and then it was really showtime between Sutil and Bortique. Indeed. And there is the Dorian Pin car, which in terms of straight pace, I think is unquestionable the quickest car out there thus well, far. Certainly, that would uh, everything everything tells us that that is the case. But of course, uh, she has quite a lot of uh, four day challenge evos in front of her now. Follow us on at Ferrari Races, if you will, as we celebrate our thirtieth anniversary year of the Ferrari Challenge. We are here at Paul Ricard on the. Uh, uh, coast here in uh, the south of France. Absolutely glorious location where the uh, air temperature is a, a beautiful 22.9 um, uh, degrees, so we're nearer to 23 than 22. Track temperature 46 degrees, and uh, we are going to uh, experience uh, this uh, 5.842 kilometer circuit now as we take you through all the sectors. Sector one into the first turn, which is the left-hander, turn number one. Sector one can turns turns one, two, three, four, and five. So a bit twisty towards the end of the sector. And then we get into what is effectively the power sector here at uh, Paul Ricard. Out of turn number seven, and then it's a big blast 
Mistral straight before uh, turns eight and nine, the chicane. And uh, then we get to the really windy part, if you will, of the Paul Ricard circuit, where the setup of the car has to be compromised to accommodate both the power section and also this windy section through turns 11, uh, 12, 13, uh, 14. And the final turn is turn 15, the whole sector starting with turn number 10, that fast right-hander. So that is one lap of the uh, circuit Paul Ricard. 15 turns, six left. Nine of them are right-handers. The track built in 69, made its racing debut back in 1970. Let's have a look at this place in full. evocative look at uh, Paul Ricard and, and what you saw in there of course was the fact that uh, here as a special guest yesterday was the Ferrari F355 challenge car so as we celebrate 30 years of the Ferrari challenge this Simply fantastic one make series. The Ferrari F355 forming part of its rich heritage and history, if you will. Of course, the series was started with the F348, but as I said, this F355 uh, here with some fantastic laps to illustrate just how potent this car was in the Ferrari Challenge and remains potent today. With Christian Colombo at the wheel, I believe, was able to put in a stunning lap here at uh, Paul Ricard. Reliving the history then as we celebrate 30 years of the Ferrari Challenge. And uh, Adrian Sutil then is standing by. What can he do alongside John Vortic going into turn number one? The Richard Mille safety car is leading the cars away then on ahead of Marco Pulcini and Hanno Luskowski. Hanno Luskowski really involved in a fantastic battle yesterday with the driver that's starting P11, Alessandro Cozzi, and then it's Max Mugelli, the Trofeo Pirelli driver alongside. Mikhail Bosche and Alexandra Bosche line up side by side for Kessel Racing on uh, that row of the grid. And then we see Dorian Pin well out of uh, qualifying, going from P15, P16. Alongside is the car of Andrew Gilbert and Omar Jackson starting from the uh, back of the pack. That's the way the grid looks as the cars then uh, are. Uh, weaving from side to side just to try and generate a little bit of temperature into the tires then you can see there that you climb uphill uh, through uh, turns eight and nine and uh, nico we are standing by for trofeo pirelli race the drivers are prepared the cars are prepared and uh, you are probably better than me and i hope you're all ready for what you're about to witness it's got to be a fierce battle into turn one lots of runoff area so the drivers generally are a little bit over ambitious at times um, because you can evade if something tends to go wrong um, but it's going to be very difficult into those first few turns and everybody will be eager to get going it was really great to see on board with Andre body you could see his whole body moving as he was pressing the brake pedal to generate uh, uh, temperature from the uh, brake pads and discs so that it dissipates out into the tires to get some uh, well-needed warmth into those Pirelli tires and here is Dorian Pin 
who I predict during the fir uh, course of the first lap will be doing some overtaking. Uh, out qualified by uh, some measure, Dorian Pin, the uh, team deciding to uh, leave it until uh, the second half of qualifying before she would make her qualifying effort. And then, for one reason and another, got caught out and uh, therefore was not able to set a meaningful lap time. Which is great for us because it's going to be oh so entertaining. Watch her try and carve her way through the pack like uh, the proverbial hot knife through butter. We will see. She has Andrew Gilbert uh, ahead of her and Omar Jackson right behind. Now the cars go side by side then to line up in grid fashion and the Richard Mills safety car will peel off into the pit lane and it will be the responsibility of John Vortique, pole position, Adrian Sutil alongside to control the pace of the rolling start. Ferrari Challenge, Trophy Pirelli, race two and Paul Ricard is just moments away. Go green, Adrian Sutil and John Morty could not be closer together if they were welded. Very, very good start from Luca Nermi, who's trying to best both of them going into turn number one. Who is going to be able to take it? It is John Bortic who's able to close the door, but Luca Nermi has got past Adrian Sutil. A number of cars run wide, and one car goes around. I think that's the Alessandro Cozzi car. Dorian Pin is on the road and up the road. Nicola Rosi is uh, taking avoiding action. One car stricken there, and I'm not convinced that we're going to see this lap reach its conclusion. But John Bortic, whilst everyone else was losing, Losing their head, he kept his and uh, maintains that uh, pole position and converts it into the uh, race lead. So it is John Bortic from Adrian Sutil and Luca Nermi. Anjabadi is leading in terms of the AM drivers ahead of Nigel Schudeva uh, and Hanno Laskowski and Omar Jackson. So Omar Jackson must have taken some avoiding actions to uh, uh, really move up the order then. And uh, there you can see it's Christian Brunsborg. Christian Brunsborg then. I'm sure that is Christian Brunsborg. He has uh, dropped down the order, and uh, that means that the safety car has been called for. I can see that on my timing screen now, so I did wonder whether we would get the lap completed, Nico, and uh, quite clearly, thank goodness I got that right, it was Christian Brunsborg, and you can see he's really, really disappointed. So, safety car called for on the opening lap, and it was a brilliant start from John Bortique, but Luca Nermi was on a mission, wasn't he? Yeah, definitely he was. It looked like he had made it all the way to P1, didn't quite get it to stick and therefore resides still in P3. So in, at the very front, the order is as we were, but obviously Christian Brunsburg is very much in the fight for the championship in the AMS. Very, very disappointing early end. And Nicola Rosi, who was really, really quick all weekend long for him too, didn't even make it past turn one. Um, Dorian Pin, meanwhile, uh, has benefited. She's already up into P10. Mm. And uh, everybody bunched together is not a disadvantage for her because on the restart she will be surely looking to improve further places. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you're right. So there is the uh, number 44 car that we could see going through in our picture of Andrew Gilbert. So uh, safety car was called for before the completion of one lap. Then this is uh, Ferrari Challenge Trofeo Pirelli live from uh, Paul Ricard. Good afternoon to you. Um, we have a safety car out already. So John Boutique, Adrian Sutil, Luca Nermi, the top three for Trofeo Pirelli. For, uh, Trofeo Pirelli am, it's Andre Bardetton, and then it's uh, Schoenevert and Hanno Laskowski. They are top three in uh, Trofeo Pirelli am. Let's get a replay of the start right now. And just keep your eyes on the uh, blue car there. Luca Nermi, as he tries to put himself right alongside John Boutique. And uh, sure enough, I thought, same as Nico, that he'd actually done enough. But John Bortique was able to carry enough speed into turn number one. And uh, therefore, he was able to go through. Well, um, high wiring and Oh, there you can see Christian Brunsburg go around. There were four cars involved in that. And that was just nothing other than a uh, racing instant from how I've seen it there. Marco Puccini was involved in that. Um, let's see if we can pick it out better from this onboard shot as everything went uh, awry, just uh, ahead of us. So, standing by, and uh, uh, regrettably in that replay, we couldn't. The incident here, the through turns one and two, is under investigation, and you can just see Johnny Lawson uh, to the left-hand side of your picture there, who races for the Formula Racing team. He will be uh, disappointed. There's Frederick Paulson, uh, former Formula Racing Ferrari Challenge driver as well. 
And uh, there you can see a very, very disappointed uh, Christian Brunsborg. Uh, so that incident is under investigation. Cars have got to be recovered. Of course, it's always, and I've said this more than once, Nico, going into turn one here at Paul Ricard and then turn two, it's, a, it's something of a funnel, isn't it? And, uh, of course, everyone is trying to make up places. Great to see spectators here to enjoy the race action as well. But uh, when you're in that funnel situation, it's inevitable that some panel rubbing can occur. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes you've just got nowhere to go, and even though you've got a large runoff area, mm. um, this sometimes induces drivers to be a little bit over-aggressive because they know they, can, they have space around them, but all of a sudden that space closes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially when you go through the turns and the car is, as you say, light, um, the smallest of touches can really send it around, and with all the other 4 8 challenge evils around, that can quickly lead to collisions. And, yeah, as we can see... The team here really working oh, on yeah. the Alessandro Cozzi car. Nicola Rosi steps away from the car. He'll be really disappointed. He qualified so well. And uh, uh, I met Nicolo's father earlier on today. Nicolo introduced me to his father. And, uh, of course, he's, uh, you know, Nicolo Rosi has really, really improved in terms of a racing driver. And it's been really uh, joyous to watch his uh, improvements over uh, his career in the Ferrari Challenge. And uh, one of his best qualifyings I saw today. And that's really, really disadvantageous because I expected him to do very well in the race as well, and uh, it's just one of those things, one of those racing incidents, no one's fault probably, uh, but unfortunately has probably seen the uh, likes of Nicola Rossi and also Christian Brunsborg out, Alessandro Cotti, the car was in the pit lane, but hopefully he'll be able to rejoin, and uh, maybe also to Arno Dahlmeyer, so we will see, we're on board with Dorian Pin then, who, as Nico quite uh, correctly pointed out, has uh, made up some places and finds herself in P10 now, um, of course, there are two, two ways to look at the Dorian Pin situation. Uh, whilst we're under the safety car, uh, she's not able to progress. She's not able to move forward. Uh, she's able to put her, uh, keep her tyres in very, very good condition. Um, but, of course, as the uh, clock ticks down, I mean, uh, the safety car was called for right at the very, very start of the race, and I don't think it's going to be a long time in terms of recovering the cars that are stricken on the track. Therefore, I don't think it's going to be an elongated safety car period. But, inevitably, the time does tick away, and uh, Dorian has got, theoretically, nine cars uh, before she can reach the top step of the podium, which is where she would like to be, and that's going to be a tall, tall order, Nico. Yeah, the only positive from that right now is she's biding her time before going out for the attack again is everybody's pretty much bunched up, but she will hope that the drivers ahead of her will not uh, allow a large gap to develop, because before the safety car line, quick that she might be she's not allowed to overtake so hope she will hope that everybody will be close together when they resume the race Anja Bardi we're on board with right now now Anja has got a lot of guests here because it is his uh, local race Anja Bardi then of course really really wants to uh, impress uh, all his guests he did that by uh, taking the race win for Trofeo Pirelli Am yesterday and if he can make it two out of two this weekend he'll be delighted with that uh, let's go down to Marietta Evans who's in the pit lane for us First of all, Luca, tell us from your perspective what happened at that race start. It's difficult to say because, um, you know, from the replay, uh, I guess they got in contact, Arno and uh, number 13 and uh, Brusborg, like they got in contact in turn two. Normally then in the first lap, you want to you wanna leave enough space <laughs> for, you know, to run even side by side. And I guess there was not enough space, right? So they got in contact, they spun, and that's... Where we are now, we're trying to put it back uh, racing because we want to still have him driving in this hot condition and collect uh, good information for the next race because we're going to face the summer, right? And on the other hand, whilst we are here in Iron Links uh, team, that might help a bit uh, Dorian P in the safety car situation? Oh, definitely, yeah. She already got a good start. So having the safety car, you know, she's fast. So the less, the less we have, uh, the more we have with grip flight, the better it's gonna be for her. So it's not, the safety car is not ideal for her, but still is a good chance to have the pack uh, regrouped. And then when she starts, she, ha she has everything everyone closer so yes definitely but she's super quick she's gonna she's gonna have fun thank you very much and good luck for both your thank drivers you. thank you guys uh, so uh, really catching up with uh, the Scuderia Nikki Iron Lynx team then to ascertain what the uh, strategy is with Dorian Pin. A very good point made there. Dorian is so quick that actually all the time spent behind the safety car is, is uh, whilst it's advantageous in one way, it's disadvantageous in another way, of course, as well. And you can always look at both sides of the coin, I guess, Nico, and uh, that's exactly what he was doing. 
So it's Boutique, Sutil and Nurmi. Then it's Ange Bardet, uh, Jean de Verde and Hanno Laskowski, the uh, top three. Now the safety car is going to come in at the conclusion of this lap, uh, which is still some way away because the safety car has only just uh, passed our uh, commentary studio, Nico. Yeah, it's three minutes, but that means everybody will now know, okay, this is the lap to prepare the tires, to refocus and to be on the lookout for any moves, if you're uh, Adrian Sutil, that is, that John Wartig, where he might give it a footfall and uh, accelerate, because that's the moment he ca just cannot miss if he wants to get on terms with uh, John. Absolutely right. Very good to see that Formula Racing have managed to get Alessandro Cozzi back out on the track. He's joined the, what is uh, considered the uh, back of the crocodile. Um, and uh, therefore, Alessandro Cozzi will be in the race. And that's uh, really, really good to see. Uh, Christian Brunsborg, Nicola Rosi and uh, Arno Dahlmeier. Well, Arno Dahlmeier, I think, is still in the pit lane, according to the information that we have on our uh, timing screen. Um, but uh, we will see whether Arno Dolmeyer is able to uh, return uh, to the race. When we finally get round to the start-finish line, we're uh, going to be at maybe 17 minutes of uh, racing time left, maybe 18 minutes of uh, racing time left. So it's uh, somewhat shortened, this uh, race duration, that's for sure. So uh, all the drivers now, as uh, Nico has suggested, uh, choosing to, uh, of course, uh, re-energise the... Uh, uh, tires by uh, getting some temperature into them by using the brakes as best they can uh, so that when we're ready to go racing because once again Nico it is going to be a funnel going into turns one and two or by it it will be single file rather than side by side in grid formation yeah true that's going to be a bit huge difference we think but yeah, uh, we hope <laughs> <laughs> you know all the drivers will be on the lookout to be to not miss the moment uh, when the crocodile starts accelerating to stay in the picture. Dorian Pin we're on board with now as she's preparing herself ready to get uh, ready for the get-go if you will and we saw uh, just a few moments ago Ange Bardi doing exactly the same so there is the uh, Dorian Pin car uh, you can't miss it the uh, color is all pink it's uh, car number 83 Dorian Pin um, and incidentally going into this uh, weekend uh, Dorian Pin had taken uh, both the wins in Portimao it was uh, P4 yesterday uh, where will it be today? Well, we're not so far away from uh, finding out because uh, the uh, safety car is about to peel off into the uh, pit lane. So let's go get ready to go racing again. And uh, here we go then as John Voltigue rounds the final turn and heads towards the uh, lighting gantry. Once they've crossed the safety car line, uh, they are allowed to overtake. Luca Nermi is looking lively against Adrian Sutil here, but it was a good restart from John Voltigue. So off John Vorti goes, and here comes Dorian Pin already making a move. And Dorian Pin is already getting past the uh, uh, car of uh, Alexandra Bosche. Uh, so Dorian Pin picks off another driver then uh, before we've even got into turn number one. So uh, brilliant driving from Dorian Pin so far. She'll be after Max Mugelli next, but John Vorti leading by uh, some eight tenths of margin. And uh, Luca Nomi really chasing down Adrian Sutil, our winner in Trofeo Pirelli yesterday. Uh, then it's Ange Bardet and uh, Judah Verde, and uh, then Hanno Laskowski. That's the way it looks across the top six drivers at the moment. Here comes Luca Nomi then. Where can he provoke a mistake, uh, potentially from Adrian Sutil, uh, which will enable him to uh, move himself up from uh, P3 to P2? So, Bortik, Sutil, Nurmi, then it's Bardet, Schunderved, and Hanno Laskowski. And Dorian Pin on a move, and so too is Alessandro Cozzi trying to get past uh, Andrew Gilbert. So, Alessandro Cozzi, of course, spending some time in the uh, pit lane through the uh, uh, turns nine and ten they go, or rather turns eight and nine, because they're approaching turn number ten at the end of the uh, Mistral Straight. There is Hanno Laskowski. He had such a good battle yesterday. Uh, let's ride on board here. And uh, as you can see, the uh, number four car ahead is the uh, car... And it's the, actually the number three car ahead uh, that we can see of uh, Max Mugelli for CDP Eureka. And it's Dorian Pin trying to find a way past Max Mugelli as Max Mugelli is doing some overtaking himself as well. So the cars go side by side and there's kind of nowhere for Dorian Pin to go. Does she go inside, outside? Uh, well, uh, she's trying everywhere, that's for sure now. Uh, very, very smooth on the uh, controls as you can see. The inputs from Dorian Pin are super smooth. Not at all aggressive. Uh, Dorian Pin able to carry speed here. So uh, this three-way fight that's going on is uh, fantastic for us to watch. So uh, Max Mugelli, Dorian Pin, Omar Jackson ahead. So Omar Jackson then is defending from uh, Max Mugelli. And 
Omar Jackson in uh, for KSL Racing. Then it is uh, Max Mugelli for CDP Eureka. And then the Scuderia Nikki Iron Lynx driver Dorian Pin. Where is she going to go? Going into uh, turn number one. Here's Max Mugelli on the inside of Omar Jackson. Dorian Pin trying to go through and exactly the same uh, hole created by uh, Max Mugelli. And good job done there by uh, Dorian Pin. She will focus her attention now, and you can see the lights being flashed. What she's trying to do is provoke just the tiniest of mistakes from Max Mugelli so that she can find a way by here. So riding once again on board with Dorian Pin, she's using just enough curb, uh, trying to get the uh, perfect trajectory. You can see the completely different line that Dorian Pin used there uh, to try and advantage herself uh, against Max Mugelli, of course, where they will be uh, moving into the uh, uh, Mistral Straight, if you like. Dorian Pin will try and outbreak potentially going into the chicane. Let's see if she can get close enough to get the draft off the back of the Max Mugelli car and then dive to the inside. That's a bit of a prediction on my part, and I hope it pays off because that's what I said is going to happen. And here comes Dorian Pin. My goodness me, it's not very often that I get things as right as that, but that was a textbook overtake Nico. She executed that absolutely perfectly. Yeah, definitely. You could see how she benefited from the draft and she had a very good exit on the previous turn and in combination it was just too much for Max Mugelli to defend on this. Next in her target sites will be Hanno Laskowski. And uh, here we can see it in uh, replay then. Just using the, uh, the draft off the back of the Max Mugelli car and then having to be really, really keen on the brakes and make sure that you can get the car rotated. Dorian Pin clearly had 100% confidence in uh, what the car would deliver and it did deliver and so did she. So that's another place uh, picked off. So uh, Dorian Pin is now P4 in uh, Trofeo Pirelli and actually has already got by Hanno Laskowski and is P6 in the race overall. So this is uh, something of a real Herculean effort from Dorian Pin that she's um, chasing away here. Who's next in the target sites? It's Nigel Schoenderverd. Now Nigel Schoenderverd is in a different class. However, she's got to get past the car to be able to try and get to the others as well. Uh, and you can see that Ange Bardi has broken away from um, Nigel uh, Schoenderverd really rather well. So Dorian Pin uh, needs to uh, keep pushing and keep pushing. We're being advised that there will be a uh, drive through penalty for Arno Dahlmeyer. Uh, for causing a collision at turn number two. Now, Arno Dahlmeyer is another Scuderia Nicky Iron Lynx driver. And uh, there you can see he's in uh, hot pursuit as we speak. And uh, he is going to have to go through and take a drive through penalty. You have to take it within three laps of being advised of that uh, uh, drive through penalty. So uh, it's strife for Arno Dahlmeyer then, who is going to have to come out of that battle with Andrew Gilbert and focus on uh, driving into the pit lane and going through the pit lane for his uh, penalty. So we will see when, within the next three laps, he decides or chooses to take that penalty. So Dorian Pin has got uh, an awful lot closer to uh, Schoenderverd already. Fastest lap being set by John Bortique now, a 2.05.939. And he's got a comfortable margin of uh, just 1.2 seconds over Adrian Sutil, who in turn has uh, a similar margin to uh, Luca Nermi, perhaps a bit more. And uh, then it's Ange Bardi, uh, Nigel Schoenderverd, and uh, then it is uh, Dorian Pin. So, uh, Dorian Pin then continuing her forward looking trajectory as we look at the battle that's going on between Marco Pulcini and Omar Jackson. But this is the uh, number five car of Adrian Sutil, currently running in P2, chasing down this man, John Vortic. So, John Vortic doing a very, very good job. He did a lot of hard work in the qualifying. And Ange Bardi, who of course is racing in uh, Trofeo Pirelli Amnico. Uh, lap for lap is almost as quick as our Pirelli drivers. Yeah, definitely. And um, Dorian Pin, obviously, her next real target is Luca Nomi because he's the next driver in of class. Course. And Luca Nomi has just been given the final warning for track limits. Interesting. And the next warning would come in the in the form of a five second penalty. It's currently six and a half seconds, roughly, between the two. If you add five seconds okay. to that, it all of a sudden becomes very, very close. And we have 11 and a half minutes remaining. So that's something to watch. Very much so. Uh, so Omar Jackson has got by uh, Marco Pulcini then. So Omar Jackson is currently running uh, P9 in the uh, race overall. And that's P4 within the uh, Trofeo Pirelli AM class. So John Bortic, Adrian Sutil, Luca Nomi. Then it's Andre Bardi. And uh, Dorian Pin has got by Nigel Schoenfeld now. So next in her target sites is going to be the car of uh, Andre Bardi. And Andre Bardi was uh, some way up the road from Dorian Pin, but we know how 
quick Dorian Pin is. So Omar Jackson and Marco Pulcini then, they're having a ding-dong battle in this uh, a particular fight that is uh, going on. And uh, it is for P9 and P10 in the race overall, but it's for P4 and P5 within class. And uh, Marco Pulcini in the number 27 car and then Omar Jackson uh, in the car, the orange uh, colours that you can see of Omar Jackson in uh, car number seven. You can see Marco Pulcini really, really flashing the lights there, uh, trying to distract Omar Jackson as Marco Pulcini goes to the inside. That was a big, big late lunge on the brakes. But there was a respectful racing room given by Omar Jackson, and Pulcini then puts himself ahead of Omar Jackson. So the roles are reversed once again, Nico. And uh, I suspect that this is going to seesaw through the remaining ten and a half minutes of this race. The places between the two of them, they are so, so competitive and close. Yeah, definitely. A very, very entertaining battle going back and forth and really giving us something to enjoy. Um, and as you say, 10 minutes remaining, Dorian Pin continues her quest to get on terms with the top three Pirelli drivers. It's Ange Bardi in between, and he won't hey, just wave her by, even though he That's is in a sure. different class. This is his home track, so the plot really thickens with 10 minutes remaining. 10 minutes remaining. Dorian Pin is a podium, a possibility for her. You wouldn't bet against it. It's going to be jolly hard work, jolly hard work. Um, but, and you can see the gap she's got to make up to Andre Bardi, and Andre Bardi uh, with IB Fast down the uh, side of the car is kind of really appropriate, isn't it? And there he is inside the car. Andre Bardi then, local driver. He would dearly love to make it two out of two this weekend in front of his home crowd, and uh, he's driving really, really well, I have to say, and has got a lot of speed. And uh, Dorian Pin, while she will throw everything at trying to uh, get on terms with Andre, as Nico is quite correctly pointed out, Ange is in a different class. So the battle is not really with him. The battle is with the next car up the road, which is Luca Nermi. But of course, uh, to be on terms with Luca Nermi, she's got to get by Ange, and he is going to offer no assistance. I can promise you that. Uh, we split the screen so that you can see Ange hard at work inside the car, and uh, also what that, uh, what that uh, looks like outside the car as well, as he makes his way through uh, turn nine and uh, heads towards uh, turn number 10 now. Dorian Pin is getting a bit closer, but I don't think, I don't think he's narrowing the gap quickly enough. Uh, knowing how quick Dorian is, but she is up against the uh, very front runners of this race now and trying to make the time up in the eight and a half minutes that are remaining. I mean, what she would probably love now is a very, very quick one lap safety car because that would just play into her hands nicely because that would bunch everyone up. Well, I don't think she will get it. No, <laughs> the problem with the, the safety cars generally is it's more than just a lap. And you can see Ange is approaching Luca Normi because he's also feeling the pressure from Dorian Pin. And in fairness, she is making up more than a second per lap. Which is good. But on the other hand, eight minutes means maybe four more laps, something like that. So the time is coming down. Now, Luca Normi has to balance the fact that he doesn't want Ange Bar to overtake him, making him vulnerable, but equally he has been warned about track limits, so overdriving the car and being too aggressive equally sounds like a bad idea. And of course he won't necessarily overdrive the car, but of course uh, as we reach the uh, final third of this race, and we're well in the final third of this race, tyre degradation might form something of a factor, so the grip is going to go away from these drivers because uh, the cars have been driven hard. Uh, of course, they've been punctuated by that safety car period where you didn't drive as hard or where you don't drive as hard, but even so, uh, it could have something of an impact. And Luca Nermi uh, may not be deliberately exceeding the track limits in terms of the uh, warnings that he's been given, but moreover, just that is the grip that's being afforded to the car for the speed that he is driving at. Absolutely, and while we are watching this developing battle, Adrian Sutil is clawing a little bit back at John Wartig. Now only 7 tenths, but was just a few minutes ago 1.5 seconds so this could also come to a head for the lead of the race oh that's going to be interesting so uh, john boutique then uh, perhaps was going to suffer some pressure from adrian sutil towards the end of the race we're into the final six and a half minutes of this race as we watch dorian pin then continuing her quest to get ever closer to orange Bada, uh, and then to uh, luca nomi with six and a half minutes remaining it's going to be a tall order uh, what she will do, though, is bank bank good points for uh, P4 within class, P5 in the race overall. And uh, 
She is getting closer. You're absolutely right, Nico. But uh, we are running out of time for her to be able to not only get close, but get by uh, both Anjabadi and Luca Nermi. So we will see what she is able to do. But Anjabadi is now right on the back of... Uh, uh, Luca Nermi and Dorian Pin, just when it's needed most, sets the fastest lap of the race thus far. So, there she is, uh, Dorian Pin then, in the Scuderia Nicky Iron Lynx car. And uh, here, the live gap between John Voltique and Dorian Pin. This is going to be interesting to look at. So, let's get the live gap as they cross the timing line now. And John Voltique then, really under pressure from Adrian Sutil. 7.239 is the uh, margin between our race leader and Dorian Pin doing the chasing. What Dorian really wants now is for Ange to really take the fight to Luca Nermi. That will slow both of them and allow her to get closer to uh, potentially getting by Ange Bardi, which will have no impact on Ange's position in the race, but it will allow her to perhaps take the race to Luca Nermi in the final five minutes of the uh, duration that we have available. Sutil, meantime, has taken another couple of tenths out of John Bortique. And here we can see is uh, beginning to be right on the uh, back end of uh, John Bortique. So this ain't all over yet. The final five minutes could be quite fraught here as Adrian Sutil then. And John Bortique, who had uh, torrid luck in uh, Portimao, but uh, everything has come back good for John Bortique this weekend. And you can see Aldrin Sutil is really taking it to him. The uh, gap evolution over the last three laps. There's Ange Bader. And uh, here comes Adrian Sutil and John Voltic. I think that John has just responded a little bit and up the ante and, and uh, found a little more, another millimeter on the loud pedal, perhaps, and has uh, uh, increased the margin to just under seven tenths. And it looks like it's more than that now. Uh, perhaps there are certain sections of the track that Adrian Sutil is able to work better than John Bortic. Um, and I know you've been analyzing the sectors as well, Nico. Where is Adrian strong? Where is John strong? You kind of get the impression that John has set the car up a little bit more for straight line speed, so yes. a little less in terms of wing, and therefore the second sector is the better one for him. Um, and obviously on the straight is where you want to overtake, so that gives him the advantage. But here is Dorian Pin. Now she's got this lap, those turn actually, and then two more laps remaining. And you wouldn't put it beyond her, would you? I said, is a podium a possibility for Dorian Pin? Well, uh, we will find out. Anjabade to uh, Dorian Pin now is just two tenths. And Dorian Pin on the outside of Anjabade. Into class battle it is not. Therefore, Dorian Pin goes through. She is now P4 in class. She is going to chase down Luca Nermi, as Nico has predicted. We've got two laps left to run. What can Dorian Pin do to unsettle the Formula Racing driver that is Luca Nermi running in P3. My goodness me, this is going to be a knife edge right until the checkered flag. So there is Luca Nermi, there is Dorian Pin. Luca Nermi now needs to be really cool, calm and collected. Of course, he was the youngest driver ever in the Ferrari Challenge when he made his debut and uh, therefore probably doesn't suffer the uh, stresses and pressures of someone a bit older. But when you've got someone as quick as Dorian Pin right up your trumpet, my goodness me, uh, it cannot fail to impact you. What he needs to do is just focus on the uh, what's in front of him rather than looking at the rearview mirror because the moment he looks at the rearview mirror and loses concentration, Dorian Pin, like a viper, is going to be through. There was a slight mistake from Luca Nermi right at the apex of that uh, chicane. That has allowed Dor Dorian Pin to get a little bit closer and now can Dorian Pin even get closer still and uh, Luca Nermi well aware of the fact where Dorian Pin is going to try and have a go and he's trying to close the door as much as he possibly can he can ill afford to run wide and exceed the track limits because we know a penalty is just awaiting for him Dorian Pin tries to go around the outside now to put herself and set herself up perfectly for the trajectory she needs to try and make an overtake on Luca Nermi under two minutes of the race remaining this is Ferrari Challenge Trophy Operelli live from Circuit Paul Ricard, where Dorian Pin, virtually from the back of the pack, has had to fight her way through the entire grid of cars and to put herself into a potential podium position here. There's one car that is preventing that podium, and that is the number 66 car of Luca Nermi. Nermi and Dorian Pin go side by side. Luca Nermi has got the inside line, which is advantageous going into turn number one. But Dorian Pin has got so much speed. Who's going to be the king of the late breakers here? 
Well, they both are still together, but I think Dorian Pin has done enough. Absolutely brilliant move from Dorian Pin, who puts herself into P3, and that is a podium place, having made 12 overtakes, gone past 12 cars in the space of this race, which has been punctuated by a safety car. On the final lap, Dorian Pin secures a potential podium position because it isn't over until we see the chequered flag, Nico. Yeah, I mean, driver of the race, <laughs> question mark. I don't think it really is a question mark. Although John Bortique, who has up the gap a little bit once again to Adrian Sutil, he looks like he is the... Uh, going to get this home and defend his pole position, which is no mean feat. But Dorian Pin, I mean, to keep it controlled throughout the race is really admirable. Absolutely. A cool customer by uh, some measure. This is our race leader, John Rortique, then. Uh, he richly deserves a race win, to be fair to him. Adrian Sutil, he tried to close the gap. This is somewhat unbelievable. Dorian Pin, then who is in that podium place. I think it was with six minutes to go, Nico, that I said, I wonder if Dorian Pin could get a podium out of this. Um, I, I feel I was being ambitious, but uh, of course, I shouldn't have thought that I was being ambitious. The sheer talent of Dorian Pin, um, and uh, she was able to get by Luca Nermi. But this man, John Bortique, who leads the race and leads the uh, Trofeo Pirelli class, uh, has done a fine job defending from Adrian Sutil. He has one turn to finish off, which he has done. And John Bortique heads towards the checkered flag. And his engineers salute him as he takes the win ahead of Adrian Sutil. And here comes Dorian Pin, a remarkable drive to take P3. And Onjabade then will win in uh, Trofeo Pirelli Am ahead of Nigel Schundevert and uh, Hanno Laskowski. Well done to uh, John Vortique, well done to Adrian Sutil, and a big, big well done to Dorian Pin. So here come the rest of the cars then across the uh, timing line then. Onjabadi has made it two out of two this weekend, but John Vortique for FML D2B is our Trofeo Pirelli winner. Good race, Nico, with uh, plenty of drama in it, and well done to this man, Onjabadi. Uh, Trofeo Pirelli and winner for SF Code to Zua Can, and uh, he will be thrilled because, of course, all of his supporters that are here this weekend celebrating double bubble for him. He's been on the top step of the podium two times and four times in total, <laughs> in, yes. in total on the season. So he is maintaining his perfect record. And do you think the team is happy? Well, uh, yes, I rather think. I mean, you know, to be fair to D2P, who've been waiting for the win from John Morty, um, you know, he, he, he suffered some really, really bad luck last season as well. Uh, we opened the season this year at uh, Porto Mau, where he and the car were not as one, and he really, really... Uh, he, he took the best out of it, but it wasn't where it needed to be in terms of pace. And uh, this weekend, everything has come good for him. And, you know... As he's often said, you win and lose as a team. John Bortique, P1. Adrian Sutil, P2. Dorian Pin, P3. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was a nice one. There, confirmation of the uh, Trofeo Pirelli classification then with uh, John Bortique winning by uh, just under six tenths over Adrian Sutil and then Dorian Pin taking P3 ahead of Luca Nermi and uh, Max Mugelli. Uh, we will, of course, bring you the classification for uh, Trofeo Pirelli Am as well. But first, here comes their virtual podium with Ange Bardet P1, uh, Nigel Schundevert uh, P2, and actually, big, big well done to Hanno Laskowski taking P3 because he gave us a great fight yesterday. And here is the classification, as I promised. Bardet from Schundevert, uh, then uh, Laskowski, Pulcini, Jackson. Very good result for Omar Jackson. Uh, Boche Gilbert, Boche Kotze, and Arno Dahlmeier. Um, wow. I think I need a, a lay down and a strepsil after that race, Nico. Plenty, plenty to talk about. Plenty to talk about and great fair racing. Obviously, very unfortunate that we didn't see those two drivers, Christian Brunsburg and Nicola Rossi, compete for longer than they did. So that's obviously uh, disappointing for them, disappointing for us that we didn't see them. But no disappointment, uh, I believe, will await on the podium with... Um, John Woodhick, obviously, as the winner, will be happy. Adrian Sutil, I believe, 
got the best he could and Dorian Pin from where she started this race I'd be hugely surprised if she wasn't over the moon absolutely and so will the team be as well um, and it's a good payback for the team uh, as well um, so here comes John Bortin into the um, Arc Ferme area and uh, the team of uh, D2P are uh, there ready uh, to congratulate him <laughs> it's just taken a moment to take it in and um, John then inside the uh, car and is going to make his way out of it. Meantime, there for Gome Motorsport is Adrian Sutil, who, you know, let's be fair, uh, it's his debut in the Ferrari Challenge uh, this weekend. Of course, if you're a good driver, you're a good driver, but, you know, you need to get in, into a relationship almost with your car. And uh, this is the first time Adrian Sutil has, uh, has been in the car on the first uh, weekend. Uh, well done. Bravo, Adrian. Adrian. So just listening in to the congratulations being afforded to uh, Dorian Pin. And I have to say, uh, in terms of stature, she was huge for me yesterday when, uh, unfortunately, she didn't finish where she wanted to in the race, but still took time to go below the podium and, support, and applaud those that had taken the podium places. A big strength of character, in my opinion. Here comes uh, Ajibadi. He is into the... Uh, Park for me, so too is uh, Hanno Laskowski now. So much to talk about with Jon Wartig. What a comeback after Portima. But more important, you knew today that Adrian Sutil could pose a real threat, but you played your card so well. Talk yeah. us through that victory and that race. So it's the most important for me. I want to, to give this victory to the D2P team because uh, after Portima was probably the worst weekend of my life uh, about racing. Uh, and I worked so long to, to repair the car. Um, and yeah, this race was quite tough. I've pushed all along, but I see Adrian was just behind. So I say first mistake, I will lose the win. So concentration and focus was top to the top. What do you think was the key for you to keep calm, keep cool, keep concentrated? Yeah, it's, it's the key of the challenge, to be honest. It's to drive so smooth as possible, uh, to keep the tire fresh for the end. Uh, because if you miss this and you have the drop, uh, it's finished. Thank you very much you. and well done today. Thank you. So John Voltig then doing a very, very good job. Also doing a good job is uh, Dorian Penn, congratulated there by Adrian Sutil. Enjoy the highlights of that race.
can say this weekend about this man, Ange Barde, local hero and perfect weekend. How do you feel with everything you have achieved at your home race? Yes, he's amazing. He's a home race. We have a lot of friends here. The Ferrari organization is perfect, so it's incredible. I'm really happy to win two races in my home track. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Big, big congratulations to Ange Bardet then, uh, who has done it two out of two uh, this weekend. We are heading up to the uh, podium next, where Michele Mambelli is standing by to bring the drivers out onto the podium, uh, both Trofeo Pirelli and Trofeo Pirelli Am. It's Trofeo Pirelli, first of all. You can see Dorian Pin is already there. So too is Adrian Sotil. And here is John Vortique on the top step of the podium. Many congratulations, John Vortique, for FML D2P. So the national anthem is uh, faded out then. The uh, Pirelli baseball caps go back onto the heads of our uh, top three as Miguel Molina, uh, uh, Ferrari official Competizione GT driver, is making a trophy presentation to Dorian Pin. First of all, a remarkable drive to take B3. Adrian Sutil then. He was on the top step of the podium. It's step two for today. And then John Warty taking the race winner trophy. So well done to uh, John Morty. Mr. Lucio Vergani, Pirelli Motorsport Manager. Luca Girani then the making the uh, Pirelli trophy, uh, trophy Pirelli presentation trophy. to John Morty as well. And congratulating both Adrian Sutil and, and uh, Dorian now, guys, Pin. On the first step so the drivers will all get together on the uh, top step of the podium for a photograph, which is going to be really difficult because to frame that, as you can see, Adrian Sutil is seven foot, Dorian Pin is like four foot. And <laughs> trying to get the frame right for the photo is going to be really interesting. <laughs> I jest, of course. And, uh, uh, right, who's going to win the champagne the battle then? Surely it's going to be Wartie. Come on, John. Yeah. No, Sutil was the quickest by far, and John hasn't even got the cork out of the bottle yet. Come on, friend. Here are the uh, cars that have put those drivers onto those steps of the podium. A remarkable drive for Dorian Pin. Scuderia Nicky Iron Links. The Go Motorsport then, Adrian Sutil then on his debut for the Ferrari Challenge this weekend. He's had a win and now this P2. John Wartig did a lot of hard work in qualifying. The team did a lot of hard work to put the car into the performance window it was in. And he nailed it, taking the win. John Wartig. It is the 30th anniversary season of the uh, Ferrari Challenge. And here we can see then the uh, statistics across both Trofeo Pirelli and Trofeo Pirelli Am. Interestingly, uh, in Trofeo Pirelli Am, top speed, Hanno Laskowski. Uh, top speed, no surprise, in Trofeo Pirelli for Dorian Pin, who also set the fastest lap. It was Andre Bardi that set the fastest lap in uh, Trofeo Pirelli Am. So that's how the, uh, some of the race statistics looked. Next podium is going to be for our uh, Trofeo Pirelli AM drivers that we'll be seeing. May I remind you that, uh, please, from a social media point of view, we would love you to be part of the uh, Ferrari family and to join us as well uh, at uh, Ferrari races. Please, now, we would love you to uh, be Pirelli involved. So here comes the uh, Trophy Pirelli uh, AM uh, podium, podium then. Podium from Germany. Hanno Laskowski. Hanno Laskowski, who had a great battle yesterday. This is a richly deserved podium. Hanno uh, will be on step number three. Second, uh, from Niederland, Nigel Schoenderwood. Here comes Nigel Schoenderwood then for his first podium in the uh, Ferrari Challenge. And the winner, French driver, Ange Bardet. Ange Bardet then on the top step of the podium once again. 
And uh, therefore, we will be hearing the French I'm national the anthem. Man. We are anticipating Miguel Molina once again to uh, make the trophy presentations. Aha, as if by magic, there he is. Uh, so Ferrari official GT driver and darned good chap is uh, Miguel, who has shared the uh, studio booth with us on more than one occasion for his uh, uh, incisive insights into uh, uh, racing. So, uh, trophies presentation uh, to Hanna Luskowski, also to Nigel Schundeverd, and now to the race winner. Two out of two this weekend is local track on Jabade. Here comes the uh, Pirelli trophy. Sergio Vajani then, the Pirelli representative making that uh, trophy presentation. Now, and <laughs> there's Ange, just making sure everyone goes to the right step of the podium, uh, which they do. Okay. And uh, the photographs then, who's going to win the champagne battle? Hanno Laskowski is where my money is. Let's see. Of the end podium with the champagne. Oh, champagne. We didn't get to see. Hanno Laskowski then uh, for Rilla and Schnauk, P3 in Trofeo Pirelli Am for uh, P2 then uh, it is the uh, uh, of Nigel Schundeverd for Scuderia FM8 and then taking the win uh, for the uh, SF Côte d'Azur uh, Ange Bardet, Ange, Ange, SF Côte d'Azur can. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, Drivers' Championship then across both Trofeo Pirelli and Trofeo Pirelli Am as we leave uh, Paul Ricard. For Trofeo Pirelli, Dorian Pin still leading the uh, championship, but uh, John Bortique has closed to just seven points. Uh, gap between P1 and P2, 57 playing 50, and then Luca Nomi is P3 on 44 points. Let's take a look at the Drivers' Championship in the Ams then. Ange Bardi is leading by 32 points on 67 ahead of Marco Pulcini and Christian Brunsburg who's had a torrid race today then it's Arno Dalmeyer that's the way it looks in uh, the drivers championship or the first uh, three or four places in the drivers championship for uh, Ferrari challenge Trofeo Pirelli am and uh, there we can see and of course uh, we will be continuing throughout our season then to amass those points and see who goes up and who goes down the next round is between the 17th and the 19th of June as we go east um, for some 1,445 kilometers, the journey distance between Paul Ricard and Hungara Ring. Therefore, better get the uh, bicycle uh, chain oiled and get ready to rock. Thank you so much for enjoying the uh, Ferrari Challenge with us this weekend on behalf of Nico and myself. Uh, please make sure you join us in the Hungara Ring. Follow us on uh, at Ferrari Races and goodbye for now.